Mike, we don't get to shoot all these amazing cartridges and bullets in a controlled setting. Mm -hmm. So we have things like humidity, wind, temperature, and elevation. Those are the four that kind of come to my mind that can have some variability of how that cartridge and that bullet perform. Sure. Of those four, do you have one that I should focus on maybe more and one I shouldn't focus on as much? Yeah, of those, um, I would say elevation is, is really the one. And what we're talking about here is the performance change. Uh, let's say you have a load worked up for your gun and you pick right. the perfect bullet and all the other kind of stuff. And, right. and uh, you're using it in these environmental conditions one day and then these environmental conditions the other day. Altitude right. change, especially significant altitude change. Like let's say you're, you're shooting in the coast range and you're at four or 500 feet above sea level. And now you head to the Rockies and all of a sudden you're seven, eight, 9,000 feet above sea level. Right significant difference in air density, which then affects the trajectory of the bullet. Also, yeah. the stable can affect the stabilization of the bullet as well. It's basically you're, you're shooting through a less dense media. That bullet, as it flies through the air, it's not unrestricted. At a higher elevation, less dense media. Yes, less dense. The okay. bullet's not unrestricted. As it flies through the air, it's working, working hard to go through that air and, yeah. and push it out of the way. And the force that is put on the bullet changes the function elevation. Okay. That'll make a significant difference in your point of impact, okay. your trajectory. It will. Temperature, small. When it comes to trajectory, not much of a difference. Temperature does have an impact on the interior ballistics, gunpowder. Yeah. Some powders are more stable than others. Some of you know, if you have a box of ammo on the on the dash of your truck in a hundred degree day, it's going yeah. to be a little bit warmer than on a right. sub zero morning. Yep. Um, humidity can make a difference in extremely humid conditions. Again, it's air density. Yeah. It's tied to that. Okay. Um, but Wind. no, I'd say elevation. Wind? Wind, is that a function of how heavy your bullet is or is it a function of how long the bullet's in the air in the amount of time the wind you know a perfect crosswind is exerting forces against that bullet right what causes the most wind deflection it, it's mostly the amount of time that bullet is subjected to that force if you think about a pure crosswind blowing on a bullet as it travels through the air it's going to deflect it off to the side if that bullet's moving really really fast and it's only exposed to that force for just a microsecond versus a long time like a sailboat, like trying right. to paddle a canoe in a crosswind. It just right. has less time to blow you off course. Well, kind of like gravity, right? I mean, yeah. we, we look at ballistic, the longer the bullet's in the air, the more the drop because Absolutely. gravity's working on it for yep. a longer period of time. Same thing, it's a force. Yep. Okay. So this, this is almost embarrassing for me to admit to hear you say this about elevation. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Southeast Alaska in 2016. The largest black bear I've ever had a chance to shoot at is out there. We get the cameras all set up. I'm at a really bad shooting angle. I'm slightly downhill and I'm in the prone position trying to use my packs. But that rifle, that 308, 165 grain partition was zeroed for 7,000 feet mm -hmm. at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. And now I'm taking a 200 yard shot at sea level mm -hmm. in a super humid environment right would that be enough to cause me to shoot right under that bear by that mount? absolutely yeah it's going to shoot lower and bears look pretty big but the actual kill zone's a little bit smaller it could do it for sure i'm so embarrassed well it's a lot easier and to blame that than it is to blame yourself right well that's what i've i've blamed myself okay because yeah. it's like i was in a really uncomfortable mm -hmm. position but i often wonder how much you know would it cause an inch difference at 200 yards? Or I guess I'd have to sit down and run yeah, it through your calculator. Yeah, we'd have to run it through the know. calculators, but it can make a significant difference, especially when you're talking about 7,000 feet versus sea level. That's yeah. a big difference. Most people tend to have, you know, they go hunting in the same areas every year. They shoot their gun in at home. Maybe right. they maybe they sight it in at five or 600 feet and they go hunt at 2,000 or 3,000. Right. Eh, small potatoes, but yeah. you get to looking at 7,000 feet. That's a big difference. And going from higher elevation to lower elevation, there's a denser air matter mm -hmm. that would cause it to drop more. It would. Whereas there's if you more go dense. from lower yep. to higher, it'll cause your point of impact to rise. Exactly. Yeah, the air is more dense. It puts more restrictive force on the bullet as it goes through the air. Yeah. I just missed. Yeah, it happens. I've missed too. Everybody misses. It, but it's so embarrassing. It's it, like the, it looked like a grizzly bear. It was so big. Missing is best done alone, not with a camera pointed at you. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I really wish that I yeah. would have been all by myself on that one. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We show it when we hit them, and we show it when we don't. That's right. So uh, that's very helpful to know. Of, of those four factors, you put the most emphasis on altitude or elevation. I do, yeah. Uh, wind certainly is an impact. Wind is just right. something to be aware of and compensate for. Right. That's part of knowing where your gun shoots. And, you know, everybody uses uh, 10 mile an hour as the standard, right. you know, that kind of stuff. Just kind of learn, you know, how right. much to yeah. and hold into the wind. For me, I, I purposely go shoot a lot in the wind. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's not necessarily that lineal. You know, I don't have that much wind deflection at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. They get out there to 250 or 300, and that's like a Sandy Koufax curveball coming right? in there. Yeah. And I need to know that. Because a lot of times if I'm up on the ridge, meal deer hunting, or I'm out on the prairie of Wyoming, pronghorn hunting, it's usually windy. Right. And then it's a function, is it a straight crosswind? Is it diagonal to me? All these things, mm -hmm. you know, they, People wonder why we talk about sine, cosine, all that, when back when we did trigonometry. Right. Well, those are what we're talking about. Yep. It's not always the direct force against the bullet. Exactly, yeah. So it's an practicing about wind deflection is something that we can practice no matter where we live. For sure. Whereas we can't always practice the changes in altitude and elevation because right. I'm not gonna drive from Bozeman, Montana to the coast of Oregon mm -hmm. just to practice that. Right. Yeah. But I can go out on a windy day because, you know, yeah. wherever yeah. I live, there's going to be some there's windy There's going to be wind, so. for sure. Well, you so. know, talking about elevation, there's another form of elevation that needs to be taken into account, too, beyond just the elevation where you're pulling the trigger, and that is the relative elevation of your target versus where your gun is. Yeah. We're talking about shooting uphill or shooting downhill or right. shooting horizontally, and that makes a big difference as yeah. well, you know, and there's some old urban legends about there, out there, you know, I've been told, you know, if you're shooting uphill, hold high, if you're shooting downhill, hold low, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, you need to shoot as if you're shooting for the horizontal distance. Right. Wish I had a whiteboard to draw a picture right. on, but you talk but about sine and cosine. From me to you is the distance gravity works on the bolt. Exactly. Bulk. From me up there to the rafters, right, Doesn't right matter. above your head. If I'm still this, this far it's, apart. It's still the same horizontal distance. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. There, there are some range finders out there that actually will compensate for that, and they're very helpful, we'll right. tell you that. Super um, helpful. But, but some aren't, you know, and you just need to pay attention to that. Yeah, no, it's the ones we use, the Leupold TBR, True Ballistic Range, mm -hmm. does all that trigonometry yep. for Perfect. you. But then it's still up to me to address the rifle property properly so that I don't shoot over that mountain goat three times in a row. Right. And being so confident in my, my setup, my rifle, my scope, and, and these bullets, the next day I shot twice right over his mm. back. So this is not hypothetical we're talking this about. This is not okay. hypothetical. So as a side note, I did not know how important it was when you're shooting steep uphill angles about how your eye addresses the scope. Oh yeah. Yeah. until I went and met with the Leupold shooting team. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, were you perpendicular to the scope? I'm like, well, no. I was, they're like, yeah. well. But the yeah. good part is I was confident in my setup. Right. So of my six shots, five of them hit in the same exact spot. Yeah, just not where you wanted it to be. <laughs> now, there's a lot to that uh, positioning, you know, and, and we run into that from time to time with people using lead sleds and other yeah. rifle rests that hold onto the rifle and divorce the shooter from that. Right. And they'll spend a ton of time bedding the gun into the, the, the you know that particular rest and then getting behind yeah. it and trying to align their eye with the scope and pull the trigger without touching it and all that. That gun's gonna shoot entirely differently there than it would if you were yeah. holding it like you should and, and shooting over your pack laying on the ground or yep. off a tree limb or off a bipod or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I use a sled when I'm at the range mm -hmm. to get as close to zero. Sure. And then I get rid of the sled and then I'm on sandbags or on my pack. Right. Because I want to make sure where's this point of impact when I'm out in the field. Because I'm right. not carrying that lead sled up no. and down the hill. No. So, yeah. but, well, that's really good to know. Elevation and altitude of those four factors. Yep. Pay attention to that. Have a lot of impact. So, thanks. Yeah.